What is up, guys, and welcome back to another episode. It's been a long time since we filmed an episode for YouTube, but wanted to kind of break down for you basically a newbie version of trying to do a Coyote swap with a Gen 3 and a 10R80. So if you're new to it like I am, this is your first swap. Kind of want to run through a few problems that I've already started to have uh, with the engine and some of the parts and pieces that we've already bought for the car. Um, so we hadn't got it in the car yet and already starting to have some trouble. So I wanted to kind of make this video to explain to, you know, a beginner, a new person that has never done this, like what to expect uh, when you're trying to, you know, put parts and pieces together for your Coyote swap. Because, I mean, it's, it is a huge investment and it's a lot of money up front. And you just want to make sure that you have everything you need so when you're ready to put it in the car, everything fits first time and you're not having to you know do work you know sometimes three and four times over and over again to make it work so uh, what we did yesterday was uh, we took this engine off of a pallet we got it from Midway Mustang um, probably two or three months ago four months ago maybe uh, it was it has 12,000 miles on it we paid about twelve thousand dollars for it um, so try to take care of it as best we can. It came with pretty much everything. It came with the factory manifolds, uh, the catalytic converters. Um, it had the computer, uh, the engine wiring harness, the gas pedal, the shifter cable, the shifter. So all that stuff was on that engine that we got from Midway Mustang. And then what we've gone ahead and done is we ordered ultimate headers from Power Body Hour. A lot of the stuff we bought was from Power Body Hour except for the suspension components, that all came from UPR products. I totally believe in everything that UPR does. Uh, when I built my 85 Mustang for NMRA Pure Street, it has front to bottom, front to back, UPR suspension components on it everywhere. So when I wanted to build this car, called up the guys at UPR and ordered everything. So what I got was a Kiowa Swap K member for a, a 79 to 04 Mustang. Uh, we've got the ultimate headers from Power Body Hour made for a 10R80 swap. We had to put these on last night. Um, ran into several issues that I'm going to highlight in this video. Uh, number one being that the, issue, the, the headers fit really, really tight against the transmission. And there's one spot right here um, next to the shifter linkage. Um, the actual header. All right, guys, so here's problem number one that I was showing you right here. So there's your passenger side uh, header. This is your shifter linkage from the factory. So again, if you're trying to use that, it is right up against it. I mean, it makes it difficult to try to change gears. It's so tight. So that is problem number one uh, that you're gonna have. Um, the actual header is actually pressed up against the, the linkage from the factory. now. I will end up changing this linkage. I'm trying to get my factory 4R70 W shifter that came in the automatic car. I'm gonna to try to make it work along with that shifter cable. So I did buy a bracket to make that work. So I'm hoping that once I take all this stuff off, put that new bracket on, I'll have plenty of clearance. But that is issue number one if you're trying to use the stock shifter. The second issue is your AC compressor. Now, if you're gonna keep the AC compressor in the same position, um, you're going to end up having to take off one of the studs and the heads that holds the header on. You have to take one of those off and then put the header on and then go ahead and rethread the stud back into the hole. Otherwise, you will not be able to get the header on while the AC compressor is still on the engine. So we ran it that way. All right, guys. So problem number two is there's your AC compressor. There's your AC tube coming in. And you cannot take that off with the header in place, nor can you put it back on if the header's in place. So what we had to do was we had to take off this stud, take it out of the motor completely, fit the header in place, let it slide onto that stud down, right down here. And then once it was in place, then we went ahead and put this back in the motor, tightened it down. That was the only way we could get this header on the car now don't mind this i haven't tightened down all the bolts as you can see i just kind of test fitted this to make sure everything would work so we ran into that problem and then the problem was we tried to take the the ac line off 
to get the header on, but then we could not put the AC line back on with the header in place. So a lot of trial and error, a lot of fitment issues. That's another problem that you're gonna run into. Um, the other big issue on the other side of the engine, and I'll show you again, show you all of this again, is the starter wire. So your, your line running to the starter, your power wire. The way it is routed from the factory will not fit um, in place with these headers. The headers were just tucked right up against them. So the minute you had 10, 15 minutes of runtime on the car, you were probably gonna burn a hole through your starter wire. So what we ended up having to do is when we swapped over the 4.6 motor mounts, had to loosen those and we had to reroute the cable behind the motor mount on the driver's side, on the passenger side, sorry. And then, um, no, yeah. Uh, so we had to reroute it behind the passenger side motor mount and then bend the wire and kind of tuck it in place and put an angle on it so it would just bolt right back up to the starter and clear the header. So that's another thing you have to do is loose up your motor mount, tuck your starter wire behind it, and then go ahead and tighten down your motor mount. That was another big issue. There's your starter. Don't know if you can see that too well, but the starter wire is ran up underneath the starter to clear that exhaust pipe right there so that exhaust pipe is in the way and it is right up against the back side of the motor i can barely get my hand back here so to start your starter wire is actually ran behind the motor mount back up in here so that's another big problem that you're going to have now <clears throat> power by the hour sold me a starter that was supposed to be like a, a mini starter or a smaller starter but it's actually the same exact one that comes on the motor from the factory. So I don't really need that. Same part number and everything right there. And then lastly, really, the biggest issue of all is the Gen 3 oil pan. Um, so I have a 2019 engine. I'm not sure about the other ones, but I, I believe that the 2018 up has this same composite oil pan. And with a UPRK member, it will not fit. Um, direct you end up having to buy spacers so i have placed a call at upr again ordered some 3 8 inch uh, motor mount spacers to try to lift this engine up so i can get it in the right position and it will clear your oil pan you have a couple options i am not a fan of option two and option two is you order a gen 2 oil pan which holds eight quarts of oil versus ten um, but you can't just stop right there the gen 2 oil pan you have to have some modifications made. And after looking at what the modifications entailed, I'm not ready to go that route with this engine just yet. Um, yeah. If it was an older engine, if it was one of the old 302s, you know, something where there's a thousand parts made for this thing, I would have no problem swapping some of these things over. But an engine like this, I'm still new to the modular deal, you know, brand new to Coyotes for sure. These things are so high tech, that they, they honestly intimidate me to work on them and it's above my level of expertise. So I am not prepared to do a lot of engine work um, when it comes to this engine. Like it's just, I, I've spent way too much money to go into it myself. Now I can go take it and have somebody else do it, no problem. But again, if it's not something that I have to necessarily do, I can change it with some, some spacing on the motor mounts. I'll go that option because I can put those on myself and feel comfortable by doing that. But outside of that, when you change the Gen 2 oil pan, you have to have a custom made oil pickup to power body hour sells one. But then you also have to go in there and change like you have to take off some of the main cap bolts. Um, and those are used to hold the oil pan tube in place or the pickup tube in place. That just seems extreme to save a little bit of space versus just buying the spacers for the K member. So, we're gonna go that option, but anyway. All right, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see the oil pan is actually touching kind of the uh, the padding there. I've got on the K member just to protect it while it's on this cart. That's, the K member is actually in the wrong hole. Um, that's in the back hole, it needs to be in the front hole. So that's why I was able to get it to clear but if it was in its normal location, 
uh, it hits the K member. So if we pick it up three eighths of an inch, it should clear, it should be fine. But again, that's just another problem you're gonna run into. But anyway, I've talked enough. Um, just wanted to kind of give you guys, uh, you know, the trials and tribulations of doing this for the first time. And you know, the problems I've run into already. I haven't even got it in the car. I have not even test fitted this thing in the car yet to even describe what other problems I'm gonna have either you know with the brake booster am I gonna have problems with the hydro boost now that I've raised the engine up three eighths of an inch if that becomes a problem then UPR also sells K member spacers to space down the K member on the body so hopefully the engine will stay in the same place just the K member is gonna move down um, but again we'll cross that bridge when we get there but really just wanted to uh, to show you guys some of the some issues you may run into I know there's a lot of guys out there trying to run Gen 3s and in the 10R80. So if you're doing a new edge swap like I am or SN95, these are probably some of the same problems you're gonna run into. So if I can save you a little bit of time, hey, then I feel like I've done something for the community. And um, you know that's what this channel is all about is, is helping out our fellow uh, Mustang enthusiasts and whatnot. But anyway, hey, appreciate you checking out the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out our TikTok channel. 803 underscore speed uh, and follow us along on Facebook and Instagram at 803 speed also but anyway check it out we'll catch you next time and uh, hope you enjoyed the video peace